Okay, buddy, I thought I'd uh, do a little video on this and show this to you. Um, it's a BK Precision Model 2620. It is a obviously a spectrum analyzer, and it does have a tracking generator. Now, I know you wanted a, a spectrum analyzer with a tracking generator. Um, I used to use... Uh, I'm not <laughs> I'll be honest with you, I'm not sure if it was this one. I have three of these. Um, and since I have the Rigel <laughs> over there, I really don't need <laughs> three spares. Um, and I know you want one. And honestly, for a lot of the type of work that we do, this is really... I mean, you, you can't take really precise measurements with it. I'll be 100% completely honest. Um, but it works really well. And like I say, for the type of work we do, if you're trying to uh, tune filters or, you know, check for harmonics, this gets the job done. Um, and, you know, in your case, you wanted a tracking generator because, you know, for you're building your, uh, I forget what the heck were you, were you building here recently and needed one, your duplexer. Um, so it, this would work just fine for that. Um, and now I've got two things I can hook up to it just to show how it works. Um, I've got a CB radio hooked up here, just one of my bench radios. Nothing special, just a unit in, uh, what is this, a PC68XL. So I've got it hooked up through this big coax cable down to my two big high-power attenuators sitting on the floor. I uh, probably don't need 500-watt <laughs> attenuators, but that's just what I've got hooked up. So it's got 60, dB, uh, 60 dB of attenuation underneath the bench, and then it comes back up, and I pulled my cable off that black one right there. It loops around, goes down into an adapter, and it ends up coming in right here. So um, if I key the microphone here, you can see, and... Now these are, uh, there's a marker, you can see it just, it's really faint, I have to turn the intensity up a little bit so you can see it, focus a little bit, but there is, and you can see if I move the marker there, a little line right there, but uh, I can turn the marker off, and it's got the little light there, it goes from marker to center frequency, but uh, so, bring it back in. These are 10 turn potentiometers. So, bring that back in. And you can see it's really touchy when you're in. And I've got the. Now, it doesn't have a rotary, rotary or, you know, a digital uh, setup for adjusting the scan width. So, you just have these. This little keypad here, you can see as I'm punching. So, and like I say, then this, this is what you actually adjust the center frequency for. So you just set your center frequency. Yeah, it's like any other spectrum analyzer. It's just the bare basics to get you by what you need to, you know, without doing any anything fancy. Um, well, like I say, and then it has a fine, the fine tune here. That's just a one turn pot. So, you know, once you get it close with the, basically this is the coarse tune, you know, so you get it close and then you can use the fine tune. So I've got it on uh, channel 19, 27.185. So yeah, it's showing you 27.2. Um, has bandwidth filter, and well, actually I've got you can <laughs> obviously you can see I have the uh, mic gain turned up. Let me turn that down, and a video filter. So actually, if I spread out some, so you can see there's a video filter, video filter off, and bandwidth. Uh, turn the intensity back down some probably blinding in the camera <laughs> so but uh, and then we can go out like uh, 54 megahertz and there it is there's actually a little spike so this does have a little bit of a uh, second harmonic so you can see it easily picks up that little you know little harmonic down there and the tracking generator does work so let me ah. Of course, my camera booms in the way. Get over here and disconnect my cable. So, this is actually that bud variable low pass filter. I did a video on 
some time back. Um, and I'm just hooking up the cable down here. So I had the okay back out here. This cable from the tracking generator goes to the input, and then the output goes into the input on the uh, spectrum analyzer. Turn the tracking generator on. Uh, let's see here. Let's see. Oh, I guess it might help. <laughs> Actually, turned it on. <laughs> okay, okay. And then you can have, and it has. Now, it's one thing I'm going to tell you with this, and I think actually all three of them that I have are like this. Uh, they haven't been used for quite some time. You can tell just by me touching the buttons. You can see how they're they're dirty. So definitely, and these are real easy. It's got two nuts on the back. The little black or the plastic panel on the back pops off, and then the entire chassis slides out. Then you can get in. But yeah, if you're interested in what in this, you're definitely going to need to clean these switches because you can see. There, it's, sometimes it works, <laughs> it, they're dirty, you can see, you can just see how noisy it is when you push the button, you know, you probably sit here and do this for a while and it would probably clean up the contacts okay, actually that seems to be helping a little bit right there already, but, uh, so it has four, four 10 dB attenuators here and then the same thing on the input, it's got four 10 dB attenuators here. And then it does have a adjustable level for the tracking generator. It goes from minus 10 dB to plus 1, plus 1 dB. Um, so, like I say, I've got it hooked up to this. So, uh, right now the span, uh, we'll just set it to, I don't know, 5 megahertz looks good. So, you can see there, it drops, starts to drop off right around 42.4 uh, megahertz. And then we can even tune this little guy and see how, you know, how effective so you can you know for the kind of stuff that you want to do um and like i say i used to, i use these these things for a long time and they work just fine for you know adjusting 54 megahertz trap circuits in uh, radios um adjusting filters like this works just fine you know so if we go out you know farther out here and we can see you know here's here's some of those spikes that it's filtering out You know, all that junk we don't want. Actually, narrow it down or widen it out even more. So I got it there at 10 megahertz. But you can see, like I say, works really well for viewing stuff like this. So for, you know, adjusting your uh, duplexer cans, this would probably be fine for stuff like that. I mean, it's, I guess, what you would call an entry level uh, spectrum analyzer with tracking generator. But, uh, you know, honestly, <laughs> uh, I used, like I say, I'm not sure if it was this one because I got three of them. <laughs> you know, I started with one, and you know me, i got to have spares, and I, of course I always have to have a spare for my spare. But, uh, you know, uh, like I said, I really don't need three of them. And it just dawned on me, I actually just ran across this, and I was like, you know, Buddy needed one of those damn things. So, if you're interested in one, man, I will cut you one hell of a smoking deal. <laughs> Matter of fact, it'd be less than you paid for the Yezu parts. <laughs> so if you're interested, uh, just let me know. Um, like I say, you know, just YF game there. Um, it's like I say, it's a good working little unit. Um, they're fairly simple to uh, if you ever have to work on them. Um, and if you want, let me know. I can pop the cover apart so you can see the inside. It's spotless. You know, there's no air vents in it really, so not much to speak of. So it's pretty much spotless on the inside but uh, if you're interested let me know um i'd be happy to part with one because uh like i say i like to have spares and spares of spares but you know having that one over there i now have spares of spares of spares <laughs> I've, I've got i've won too many so uh let me know <laughs>